Hello Chiefs, so thanks for joining me at the bench. Uh, this is Mark 2 video as the camera's just fallen off and I've had to go back and start again. So <laughs> let's start again. Uh, we're looking at a picture of, of the Mark 1 Merkava. Yeah, it doesn't actually say it on the on the artwork or you know on you know on this uh, introduction to the Merkava. Yeah, and no, nowhere does it actually say it's a Mark 1, but it, it has to be. Uh, the printing on this uh, on this is 1984, so um, the I think they came into service in around 79. Now, the Merkava has its engine mounted in the front. It's, as far as I know, the only main battle tank to, to do that. Uh, they reckon it saves space in the tank itself and it gives added protection to the, to the crew. Uh, it's also well known for having an access door uh, in the lower part of the hull, and that is for picking up uh, other crewmen in tanks that have been disabled, uh, they can get in there, and it can take four. It can take the four crew quite happily. It can also take approximately five infantrymen, I believe, fully equipped, uh, and it then becomes like a giant APC when they really need to get uh, you know a group of soldiers in. For that though, it, they do have to remove some of the ammunition pallets, I think. Um, again, I'm not an expert on the Merkava. Um, it's a tank I really like. I think it's really innovative. I didn't think I'd be able to say that. Uh, but it is, it, you know, I'm, I'm a big uh, fan of the IDF and uh, I uh, I think it's a fantastic uh, main battle tank. It's, as I say, lots of, you know, they've really went away. But I think it was about 73, 74. They put it on the drawing board to, you know, that Israel was going to design its, its first main battle tank in house. Uh, this Mark I has the, the older uh, 105 rifled uh, gun. I believe it was a, a, a licence built uh, copy of a, of a British one. Uh, so, I've, uh, so I've read up online anyway. Uh, it has a 900 horsepower diesel engine. Uh, both, both of these would be changed in later marks. I believe it's about 1900 horsepower now and uh, it's got a 120mm smoothbore uh, uh, gun which is, is quite often like a lot of the, the other tanks in the world because um, it can fire then um, different missiles and stuff through the through the tube as well. It's got a four-man crew, so it has a loader in this. There's no auto loader like the uh, Soviet-type tanks. Uh, these early ones were just all cast steel, so it's got no uh, those, those thin um, uh, reactive armour plates uh, that, that you'll see on later marks. The later marks, the turret slopes down further, uh, with uh, with with the different uh, gun change and the 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 actual uh, um, extra bolt on bits that they've put on, uh, it doesn't have a coaxial machine gun. Uh, I believe they did that. So I've read again, only reading online. Um, so it could save frontal space. Obviously, uh, it, you know you, you've got less of a target to present to the enemy. Um, so they actually mounted it actually on the on the roof. Now, as I, this is a Mark One. It's not got it. Uh, although I've been looking at a lot of uh, YouTube videos on the, the war in Lebanon in '82, and uh, some seemed to have it and some didn't. They also found out that this was a shot trap behind. Uh, shot traps mean uh, that, that an artillery round, artillery, a tank round, or even a, a wire guided missile or something like that can actually uh, penetrate. Or it wasn't so much penetrating the tanks; it was jamming the turrets, and they literally couldn't move them one way or the other. So you'll see on Merkavas they have like a ball and chain hanging off the back. Now, again, from what I've seen on on videos on YouTube that are purporting to show them in the Operation Peace of Galilee in '82 in Lebanon, I've actually seen them with it already hanging off the back, and no and uh, no machine gun. And I've seen others. Uh, which have have got no added protection at the back and the machine and the coaxial on the top. So uh, I'm not 100 percent sure if they were obviously because Israel stayed in at least southern Lebanon till till I believe 84, 85, something like that. Uh, so yeah, it, I'm, I'm not 100 percent sure how accurate it would, it would the the, the full-on armour buffs would be able to say uh, how accurate it is. But um, I'm not going to be doing uh, any uh, any. Um, scratch building, I don't believe on this. It's a nice, simple kit, and I want to show it. Uh, you know, I just want—I just want to learn on it, really. 
Uh, this is, as I say, it's an old kit. It's one that they actually, you, you can put a motor in and that, and you can always tell that with the age of the, the uh, Tamiya kits. So we're not gonna, we're not gonna spend long on this. As usual with the Tamiya, you know, it's a, it's a nice straightforward uh, build process, telling you what to do. Uh, again, compared to the modern kits, I'm quite sure all the details are probably lacking or or soft. People will tell me, uh, but again, I needed to. The the, the one fi thing I always find with IDF subjects is you can add twenty quid on straight away to a kit. Uh, you know, it's uh, they're, they're not cheap. So I, I wanted to go. For, I wanted to do an I, IDF one, uh, and this was to be straight with you the, the cheapest on the market. I think I paid around nineteen pound for it. Uh, so as again, it's a fairly you get one figure the the commander. The only thing I might well do is as you can pose the two top hatches open. Uh, I would probably maybe get some. I believe you can get some plastic figures. I wouldn't. Have, I wouldn't go to the expense of getting resin ones, but uh, I might get the plastic, uh, plastic um, Israeli uh, tank figures that you can get. I say I'm not going to dwell on this. This isn't a, a review as such. It's, it's just a quick unboxing. I like to show, as I say, whatever I'm working on. I like to give it a, you know, a bit of a show and tell. There's nothing on the decals that I can see on this decal sheet that are showing it belongs to a particular brigade. A few things I might do, um, I'll put some stowage on the, the bustle on the back there uh, around here, put some stowage in there maybe and put some uh, markers on. So that's our uh, instructions, clear and concise as always. I'm just showing these bits first. Heavy duty bags. Um, we've got a bit of mesh here, and that's to go on the base of the uh, the stowage compartment at the back on the turret. These are our our markings. Not a huge lot to say about them. I say that they, they all seem to just be relevant to the to the vehicle, but I can't see any, you know, like brigade markings or anything like that. If they had any, I don't know. Uh, poly caps uh, for the wheels, which uh, you've all seen a million times. As I say I'm, I'm not teaching you to suck eggs with this kit. You've probably all built it. Oh, we've got a bit of very thin. Clear part there, I think. It's very, very thin. And again, if you want, just looking at the kit when I looked at it through the bag, if you want something that's going to be straightforward to put together and you know probably more on the weathering front and that, then this is uh, this is probably what the kit for you. As you can see, you've got the slots there to put the. You know the forward and back reverse whatever uh, for your motor and stuff that uh, they were still putting in obviously in these days uh, I'll be putting some plastic card up here and then filling the other side um, but apart from that it is what it is again I don't know enough about the vehicle um, to tell you if uh, how accurate things are you'd probably have to go on scale mates or something like that to, to do that but as I say, I am a I am a fanboy of the IDF, so I have to build some rubber tracks. I won't be changing them. Um, <laughs> I'm not good enough one way or the other. I'm not good enough to to you know put put the fancy ones together. And I'm, for, for this type of kit, uh, would it really improve things that much? So we're going to go with the rubber. See how what I can make of those. That takes me right back to about 30 odd years ago when I was a kit. I used to try and solder them together with a hot screwdriver. Brush paint the entire tank. <laughs> I mean, she's a fair old slab like most uh, most 
modern main battle tanks. If we look at the uh, the deck in here, as far as I know, this didn't have anti-slip on it. You know, these days, um, you know, they've all got that rough cast texture to the crew don't go flying off in wet weather. I will be checking up on that, but as far as I know, they didn't have uh, anti-slip. Not uh, I'm basing this for a 1982, as I say, piece for Galilee. Uh, or or now known as the First Lebanon War. Um, that's where our our clear parts will go in the vision ports there. Turret. Again, everything's nice and you know. You, again, to weather a vehicle, uh, you know, you've got something to for everything to bite on there. Got some nice uh, bit of weld uh, texture as well. As I say, I'm quite happy. Our turret ring. I'm quite happy with this. It's uh, it's at my at my skill level at the moment. Um, so it's all very simple. We have another bag with two or three sprues in. Let me have a watch these for these staples. I've got I've got a pop or a dog, and uh, I don't uh, want him standing on it. Oh, we've got the canvas part of the uh, the barrel there, the cover that's actually dropped out of the off the sprue. Let's get around. So let's see. We've got the side skirts. They don't look too thick or out of scale. I don't know. Not very good at that. We can have a two-piece barrel. So that will obviously have to be filled and sanded and whatever. And again, it's all it's all a learning curve for me. I forgot to say as well, uh, like the shot cull, which is the Israeli Centurion. Uh, oh, it's all right, let's get it in focus, Gary. You might actually know what I'm talking about. This is the the uh, two-inch mortar, um, and uh, the old Centurion used to have one, uh, so it could fire uh, smoke rounds from that or anti-personnel. Um, mainly smoke. The This early mark has it on mounted on the outside so the crewman would have to literally be physically you know, leaning out and firing the mortar and loading it and obviously you can get casualties from that so on later marks it still carries a smoke mortar but it can be fired from inside. Um, I'm looking at the flash, there's a bit of flash on a couple of the smaller pieces but to be honest, we have more or less expect that. But I mean, around the the cage for the uh, for the actual um, stores at the back, that doesn't look too bad. Got our tank commander there. So I'm not sure yet whether I'll use him, but I'll uh, I might well get some plastic, uh, some other plastic figures, see what they look like. No, I'm uh, I'm happy with that. So that's our first spring as we put it on the side. And these others, I think they're both the same. So we'll hold them both up. Obviously, our uh, our different wheels. We have um, very slight mould line around the near the edge of the the uh, outside wheel, but uh, it's not too much of a problem. A few spare track links that they carry on. I think these springs are nicely detailed. Again, needs a slight rub down, maybe. Not on the springs themselves, but on the on these cast bits. No, very nice. So there we have it. That's our. I'm calling it the Mark One Merkava. Um, as I say, it doesn't actually say Mark One on this box, but uh, I presume it is. 
So guys, thank you very much for this quick unboxing, or not so quick. It, uh, it's going to go, <laughs> so, as I said earlier, it's going to go uh, on the production line at some stage. Um, but I, I, as I say, I just wanted a, a, a simpler um, AFV of some type to, to do. I'm a, you know, I really like the Merkava, and uh, in fact, I like. Open, let's face it, there, there, there's there's a there's such a range of IDF vehicles, and uh, they've, you know, obviously, whether they're captured uh, T55s, whether they're, um, you know, heavily adapted Shermans and Centurions, uh, M60s. You know, they, you name it, uh, the Israelis put their own spin on on things, and there's such a variety you can build on. As I say, the only, the only, as as a modelling uh, thing, the only thing you can go against it is it tends to, for some reason, it does add a few quid to the, uh, often to the kit prices. I I believe anyway. So guys, thanks for stopping by and taking a look. Uh, there'll obviously be build vlogs of this either sooner or later, whenever I decide to get onto it. Um, but it's it's there now I can I can pick it up when I'm ready uh, but hopefully I'll be probably getting the shrimp bargain out of the way first and I have paint for that should be coming tomorrow as I say the paints arrived for this uh, before the the other one so guys you take care of yourselves and we will catch each other very soon on another video cheers <laughs>